Greetings adventurers, today I'm going to detail the project that I went through while trying to fix my axe. And I thought it was going to be a pretty simple process, but as with most things, I realized that this is actually a skill, one that I've never practiced before. So this is less a tutorial and more a detailing of my experience. And there will be things in here that you should definitely avoid doing. But if you have a wobbly axe head the same as I did and you attempt these fixes, then please do so with caution. This is potentially a dangerous project if you are not fully focused on it and there are a lot of ways that you can mess up as I did. So the problem that I was having was that the axe head itself was very wobbly. And this is probably because I bought the axe during the summer and then in the winter months, the handle shrunk. It, it lost moisture content, so the cells contracted. So the original thing I was going to do was a quick fix that I found on the internet, which was just to oil the entire thing and let it soak for a couple days. The idea being that it would increase the moisture content and cause the wood to swell again. And what I learned is that with projects like this, there really are no quick fixes. In order to do it properly, you have to do it right, and that takes time. So I took the entire axe head and I covered it in this feed and wax. I didn't use linseed oil, partly because I don't have any, and partly because I don't like that it, it's supposed to make handles very sticky, and I didn't really want to deal with all that, so I just used the oil that I had on hand. And I let that sit for a couple days, and it didn't help at all. And then I did a little bit more research and found a couple experiments that people had done that showed that doing any sort of soaking in oil or water caused less than 0.1 millimeters in expansion uh, in most types of wood. So I, I, I get that it's worked for some people. It didn't work for me. This is, this is currently the ax after soaking it in oil and it did not fully work. Now I could have went out and bought different oil and then fully submerged the whole thing. But what I've decided to do is that I'm actually just going to replace the wedge with a slightly thicker one and hope that that solves the problem permanently instead. I did have someone tell me that if I just soak the ax in water, that will work better than wood, but just on its face, that doesn't really make as much sense to me since the whole problem is that the water in the wood evaporated very quickly and water would theoretically evaporate more quickly than oil, which is why when we season our cutting boards, we use oil and not water. Uh, so I'm not gonna attempt to do that. It seems kind of like a waste of time. So the first step for me re-wedging this ax is that I have to get the old wedge out, which may have been made harder by the fact that I just oiled the entire thing, but we'll see. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a very small drill bit and I'm gonna drill directly into the wedge. And then I found a screw that looked like it wouldn't damage the rest of the handle and I screwed that in. And so what happened was that the wedge actually split in half and then I was able to take out both halves separately rather than trying to pull the whole thing out at once. Um, and so the way I did that was I first used the screw as sort of a lever to push one of the edges out and then I had to use the uh, spine of my knife. I'm not necessarily recommending anyone do that without proper safety precautions. Just, you know, you know your limits. I'm not responsible if you hurt yourself. Um, but I used the spine of my knife to get the other side out, pulled it out with a pair of pliers, and here we are. So for people that don't know axes, and I'm not an expert in axes by any means, but the wedge is actually what splits the top of the handle that causes it to widen so the ax head stays put. As I've seen that lots of tomahawk designs from the 18th century in America actually have a handle that is very narrow at the bottom and then slowly widens towards the top. So the head of the ax is actually not seated down on top of the head, but it is actually run up the length of the ax and then hammered into place. And then it is the force of chopping that actually keeps the ax head from coming off because it's widest at the top. This one, I can't design a handle that way because the eye of the ax is actually very, very small, which means that the smallest part of the ax handle would be too thin to be functional. It would probably just snap unless I used some really hard wood, but you know. So I went into the garage and I grabbed a small piece of pine that I had laying around. This is a mistake, don't use pine, it's too soft, which I found out. So I cut a small wedge with the pine, seated that one, and it also didn't work. The, hand, the head was still wobbly on the ax. This was of course very disconcerting and I realized I needed to take this one out and make a brand new one. Again, no shortcuts, so this time I went through the trouble of making a new wedge out of an old piece of maple. It was part of the stave that I 
was using to try and make a bow, which was another project of mine that was a learned skill that failed. So while I was preparing to seat the new maple wedge, what I realized was that because this is a hand forged item on an organic material, it's not finished perfectly. And the inside of the eye of the ax head, which is the part that goes over the handle, it's not entirely flat all the way around. So the head of the ax is going to actually have uneven contact with the handle. So I then spent four and a half hours with my knife whittling down the axe handle to try to get it to fit better. So the way I'm deciding which parts of the handle need to be whittled down so that the axe head seats better is that I'm putting the head on and then gently tapping it with the mallet so that the head actually creates shelves and indentations in the handle. Those shelves and indentations are the areas that are keeping the axe head from seating further down properly so I can whittle those down. At the same time, I also wanted to just check and see how much the wedge was going to spread the axe handle without the head on. This is absolutely something that you should not do because it was very dumb of me, very stupid. Um, so I put the wedge in the axe handle without the head on and gave it a gentle tap just to see how far down it would go. And it ended up causing a crack quite predictably in the handle because a wedge without the eyelet to keep the wood together acts like a wood splitting wedge and it and it caused a crack. Um, this is partly because I did something very idiotic and also partly because as some eagle eye viewers of the channel pointed out, the grain of the ax handle is not actually orientated properly. The grain of the ax handle as it is currently goes parallel to the blade of the ax, which is not correct because it means that as you're hitting something, all that energy is going directly into what is the grain of the ax. So that is eventually going to cause a split anyway. So. While I might have expedited the quickness that this handle would need to be replaced, it probably would have needed to be replaced anyway. Axe handles traditionally are supposed to have the grain go across. That way when you're hitting something, the grain is actually helping to resist that force rather than being split by it. I had a varying degree of success with this. It fits slightly better, but still had a little bit of movement. And at a certain point I had to stop because I would have had to seat the axe head so much lower down on the handle that it would have made it considerably shorter and that's just not something I wanted. So I decided to send it and just put the new wedge in. So I now have a working axe head on a potentially compromised handle and because I'm impatient and reckless and damn it I will use this axe when I go camping this coming weekend. I decided to just wrap the handle in a bit of hemp cordage. I didn't glue it down or anything, just in the hopes that it's able to get through the weekend. And if it works, then it works. Then I burned away the excess hemp fibers with the lighter just because I thought that it looked cool. And also the handle is burned, so I'm trying to keep the synergy. Ultimately, even though I know that there are no shortcuts as a result of this project, I failed to actually apply that lesson during the project because even though I did make a new wedge, the second that I cracked the handle what I really should have done was just take a break and then start work on a new handle no matter how long it took. But I didn't do that. I, I ended up with sort of a medium fix where I put a lot of effort into it and it still isn't perfect and I'm just going to use it anyway. So once this eventually breaks and I have no doubt that it will, and I'd love to be wrong, I'd love for it to function, but I have no doubt that this eventually will fail and I'll need to make a brand new handle. So we'll consider this part one. And if you have any advice for me, because you are more experienced, practically experienced in the fixing of ax heads like this, I'd love to hear what you have to say down in the comments below. In the meantime, I have to continue packing. The room is a mess right now. So I will see you soon. In the meantime, good luck on your adventures.